Not quite sure where I got to with filming here in Buffalo Wings, part of the Fighting Wings series. Um, but this is the end of turn nine. Um, and we've got two very distinct groups now, as you can see. There's uh, this situation up here with a kind of detached Russian I-15. Um, the bottom I-15 here, number two, kind of being pursued by this Gladiator here with this guy going in the wrong direction. So you kind of got a situation between Gladiator 1 there and this I-15 up over here. And then you've got a pursuit with this Gladiator pursuing this I-15 down here. Although I-15 2 has more speed currently than the Gladiator and so we'll probably at least maintain the distance if not open up more. And that is not an easy shot. And then down here you've got a the Gladiator giving uh, uh, this I-15 some pretty serious problems um, but I don't think that it can't announce tailing because the, the rear of the I-15 as you can see is not anywhere in, the, in the, the the arc of the rear of this plane is is down here this direction it's not over here so um, um, but uh, this is not a you know there's there's no positives coming out of this for the Russian planes. They're just kind of flying defensively now um, to try not to get um, seriously damaged um, or shot down. A mistake would not be fun for them at this stage. Um, I suppose this is a kind of situation where this I-15 could and perhaps should um, drop into a dive and try and put some distance between itself and the Gladiator, I'm not sure what its speed is at the moment, 4.5 and the Gladiator pursuing its speed is 4.5, so those two are exactly the same speed. Um, so yeah, it is just going to uh, keep giving the um, Gladiator shots unless it can do something to shake it off and it hasn't got any allies nearby to... Uh, to help it out so yeah this guy's in some trouble up over here um, I think the, there's that much separation between these planes that a shot is very unlikely to do anything even if he gets you know even if this gladiator gets a clear shot anyway let's keep going see how it all falls out I've done the movement in turn 10 here in Buffalo Wings and um, yeah the as you can see the sort of aircraft seem to have sort of paired up into uh, their own individual little fights, <clears throat> not by any design, just how things have fallen out. Um, so this is obviously a, a sort of game of chicken about to go on here. How this uh, turns out will depend very heavily on the initiative roles between these two planes. This is indecisive. The um, the gladiators in the better position, but you know, not in any way close or dangerous enough to particularly get a shot here though you you imagine the russian plane is going to maintain the distance and keep turning away if need be um so not in any huge threat here from the uh, gladiator you know you know not comfortable not not offering any threat to the gladiator but not in <clears throat> imminent danger right there but this is not looking good. Um, this uh, I-15 is not able to shake the Gladiator <clears throat> behind it. And I haven't done this shot yet, so I'm going to do that now. <clears throat> so it's... Um, these planes are both diving. <clears throat> the uh, the I-15 dropped into a dive to try and scoot away. The Gladiator dropped in, into a dive in pursuit. We've ended up in this position. Um, so... Here's where I get a little bit confused. Uh, I suppose that's uh, 30 degrees. <clears throat> so if we come over here onto our fire, firing diagram, um, this is the gladiator, this is the target, 30 degrees. So the deflection is times two, it's a rear shot. Um, for rear shots, it says if both level no change, if both climbing or diving, sum the steps of um, each from level, move deflection towards naught degrees by half the sum rounded down. Okay, so they are... Uh, 
They are both uh, diving, they both started diving, they're both shallow diving, so that's two steps, and um, uh, sum the steps of those two steps, move to electric four naught by half of that by one. Um, okay. Oh no, there's a rear shot. Sorry, if both level, no change. If both climbing or diving, move deflection away from naught by the difference in steps of pitch. Well, there's no difference in steps of pitch, both in shallow dive. Um, yeah, okay, so we're still at 30 degrees. Sorry, I was reading the wrong thing. I was reading side shots there. So there's a deflection of times two, which gives the I-15 a defense of 10. Uh, let's check the Gladiator's firepower at this range. Um, booster. There it is. Gladiator at range 2 is 12. You can see there, 333 three, three from each of the uh, uh, Browning 303s. So 12 firepower, 10 defence, straightforward one to one shot. Um, modifiers in this case are. We have some gun harmony effects. And it's range two. Half the guns fired are wing guns. Two two wing guns on this um, on the gladiator. So that is a minus fifteen. Um, this is a veteran pilot. Uh, so that's another five. So that's minus twenty. Um, what rate did the uh, what turning rate did the uh, the gladiator use? I think he used brake turn rate. Let me just check here. Yes, he did. He used a brake turn rate. So that's plus 20 for a net plus zero. Net plus zero. So whites are tens percentile dice here. We've got a 76. That's rubbish. And uh, yeah, one to one, 76. That's a clean miss. Uh, from Gladiator number two, and we go onward. Coming towards the end of this dogfight, then, end of turn 11, so we've got 12, 13, 14, 15 to do. Four more, four more turns, but uh, yeah, um, this is the situation. The um, Mainly the Gladiator's maintaining some positional advantage and pressure, but not everywhere. You can see over here. Uh, gladiators turned in and just taken a shot and actually caused minor damage to this I-15 here. Point of damage in there. Long range shot down here from this gladiator into a plane a few hundred yards away, 300 yards away. Um, didn't hit anything. But in here where the gladiator looked like it was going to be able to tail this I-15 and it was looking quite dangerous, this guy dropped into a dive and then one initiative against the guy that was sort of um, threatening him and the uh, the gladiator under here to make a decision as to where to move and then the I-15 pulled up into a climb so there's no shooting going on because the I-15 here is climbing at 10,100 feet and the gladiator's 400 feet below him in level flight so there's no shooting between these two but he's managed to drop down and then pull up a, and, and basically, essentially give him the slip and if you look at this position here, and if this uh, gladiator, gladiator under here gets a bad initiative roll, and he's facing in this direction, he's going to be hard-pressed to find a safe spot to move to, with an I-15 bank left ready to come in here, this one ready to come in here, and a guy who could throw a drop back down into a bit of a dive and fall on him. So... This guy really needs to <laughs> a good initiative roll to force these guys to move before he has to pick his spot. Otherwise, he could be um, under pressure. However, the good news for him is obviously that he's got um, two allies um, putting a lot of pressure on the uh, on these two Russian planes. So, yeah, it's uh, it continues to be um, a real. A chess match, a real game of cat and mouse with lots of things to consider every time you you move a plane you're looking at how much um, 
danger you think you're putting yourself in and how much threat and opportunity you're uh, presenting in terms of, uh, you know, uh, cutting options for the enemy. So, yeah, I keep thinking that the game's kind of petering out and then it doesn't. And then I keep thinking that it's petering out and then it doesn't. New new sort of dynamic situations, interesting decisions keep, uh, keep cropping up. So, uh, yeah, still loving it. One movement's done at the end of turn 12 here, and I've got a three-plane pile-up, all at exactly the same altitude in here. These planes are all at 9,900 feet. We have two. We have an I-15 that moved in here first, um, a Gladiator that swung in behind it in pursuit, and then an I-15 that was down here that swung in behind that. Then we've got this sort of head arc coming in from the side here, and then this I-15 coming in from the side of him. So <laughs> there's a lot of shooting that's about to happen here. Um, woof. The difficulty, um, or the slight difficulty I have, is uh, when it comes to the f shooting modifiers. Um, because I don't keep a note of exactly what manoeuvres any particular plane performed, we just know... It's starting hex, it's end hex, it's starting sort of um, altitude and end altitude, you know, it's starting facing and it's end facing heading and so on. Um, I don't know a lot of the time, I have to kind of rely on my memory as to what, whether it performed hard turns or break turns or what have you. Because if you've performed um, emergency turns, you're not allowed to fire. Um, I'm fairly sure, I know that this top I-15 used hard turns and brake turns, so he can fire. I don't think, I'm fairly sure this uh, Gladiator under here used, um, used brake turn as well as his hardest turn rate. Uh, in fact, I'm fairly sure that everyone used brake turn as their hardest turn rate. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have to pick my way through the firing now, um, which is all going to get a little bit interesting. Um, not even sure what order I'm going to do it in, but this guy's got a shot into here, he's got a shot into here, he's got a shot into a choice of two targets, he's got a shot into there, the only guy without really a viable shot is this guy here, because it's just too far away. Um, so yeah, I'm going to sort of work through all this and uh, come back if, well, I'll come back after the results, but uh, obviously um, announce if anything um, substantials happened. Okay, so I'm working through these combats. This gladiator has fired at the um, I-15, which is headed south, by the way, in that direction. So it was a difficult shot, scored a point of damage on it, checked the firing arcs for this gladiator, and it runs down this hex spine here. So not into this hex where all these three planes are. So got no shot. Um, so now I'm... F I'm doing the fire combat for the Russian planes. I'm looking at this one, which is in shooting in here uh, at this guy, and um, the modifiers work out at minus five for a veteran pilot, plus twenty for having used um, a brake turn rate. Sorry, minus 5 for veteran pilot, plus 20 for break turn rate, minus 20 for um, being in a perfect, you know, tailing line um, with the enemy plane. So a total of minus 5 and a 3 to 1 shot, 16 firepower at point blank range with a 5 defence uh, factors. And that means that... Um, He's on this 3 to 1 table with a minus 5. And you can see it's possible to score 8 hits, 7 hits, 6 hits on low numbers. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You know, he'd score 1 damage on an 87 and he's got a minus 5. So 9 times out of 10 he scores at least a point of damage. So um, whites are 10s. This is the 
most effective shot we've had in the game we'll see what happens here he gets a 97 would you believe it that with his minus 5 that's 92 and 92 still misses at 3 to 1 that is absolutely appalling luck for the Russians with a different dice roll they'd have shot that gladiator straight out of the sky instead he has completely missed and it's kind of been a bit like that this game the firing has not been good on either side the uh, the gladiators have plinked away with a point of damage here and there um, but you know it's really been a bit like that I'm gonna roll a quick die roll for the other i15 here um, I'm not I can tell that it's about a times five or times six multiplier He's got a break turn rate of plus 20, um, so this has got to be a spectacularly roll, low roll for it to even be worthwhile. And he gets a 57, that isn't going to hit anything either. That's going to be, that's going to be like a 1 to 4 or even a 1 to 6 shot um, <clears throat> at, you know, with, no not hitting anything so that's the firing done and um, it was a dangerous situation for the gladiators but uh, they've survived and uh, we move onward uh, initiatives for turn 13 um, in this 15 turn dogfight uh, something of a disaster for the Finns here um, I'm using uh, the dice to show the turn order, not the actual initiative scores, because they can range outside 1 to 9 or 1 to 10. They can go from minus 1 up to 12, I think, in this, or 11. So anyway, <clears throat> so this guy's got to go first, and you can see he's got a really tough job to decide where to go in this mess in here, going in this direction. I mean, that's a very, not an easy move to make. And then... This uh, gladiator here, has, who's facing down this way, has to fly somewhere. Again, very difficult to work out where he needs to position himself so as not to get latched onto by something. You know, if he comes down this way, there's something under here that might drop in behind him. If he comes down over here, then this might be able to swing around in behind him. So, you know, he, he's got some, <coughs> excuse me, got some uh, decisions to make as to where he can position himself. And also, how are these going to be trying to secure the safety of their third plane, which is under here, facing this way, which has got something, you know, right on it. Um, so these two have to go first. Then we get, um, then we get this guy. And then, and then this stack here is going to move. Firstly, the uh, I-15 at the bottom is going to go. Then the uh, gladiator sandwiched there is going to go. And finally, the I-15 at the top here is going to go. But this is far, far from an ideal order for the uh, Finnish gladiators. And <clears throat> quite a threatening spot now for uh, the Russians. They could get, you know, they've just had probably the most dangerous shot of the game, completely fluffed it, but they could look at another one um, this turn if uh, the gladiators put themselves in awkward positions. Well, as predicted, that was an ugly outcome. The um, initiative rolls, as I said before, were not kind to the Finnish pilots, and this is the position at the end of turn 13. This is where they ended up, tailed here, tailed here and a and a very difficult side on shot here but the russians <coughs> uh with shots on all three um uh gladiators luckily the russian pilots aren't that aren't <laughs> much good at shooting this guy missed this guy missed however this uh pilot here did put two points of damage um into the gladiator there and as I've said, this guy can declare tailing and this guy can declare tailing. And this is going to be, um, yeah, a very tricky end to the game. The, uh, the Finns now looking to get out and uh, survive the next couple of turns. End of turn 14 in this dogfight uh, between the Finns and the Russian biplanes. Um, the... Uh, 
uh, dogfight is still completely in the balance and uh, you can see we've ended up with another one of these um, sort of pile-ups here with four planes all in a kind of procession um, an I-15 under here pursuing this gladiator being itself pursued by another gladiator which is then in turn has an I-15 right on its tail so there's this strange sort of procession going on here and these were really really good shots that each of these planes had this I-15 had a great shot in here and actually put a couple of points of damage on the gladiator but it could have been must much worse this gladiator had a five to one attack into the I-15 that it's pursuing five to one attack on here you can see that on a good roll that can be 10 points of damage and I think these things only have about seven hit points so that any of these results would have resulted in it falling to the ground in flames and he rolled a 90 about as bad as it could get well after the modifiers a 90 so he did uh, three points of damage but on an undamaged plane uh, I don't think three uh, takes it to severely damaged, which um, adds in. No, it have, so these have four hit points to be severely damaged when they start getting penalties and then six points to be shot down. So that was a really stupidly disappointing result for him. The gunnery in this game has been abysmal, absolutely abysmal, but he rolled a 90. And then the I-15 pursuing him, even worse, had a three to one shot because the, the guns on the I-15s aren't as good as the uh, gladiators but he had a three to one shot on this table here where you could see the maximum damage he could do is eight seven six all this would be pretty unpleasant he rolled a 98 and missed entirely um, so yeah uh, appalling gunnery yet again uh, one turn to go then and um, everything is still flying everything is still uh, bits and bobs of damage on a number of the planes but nothing you know one good shot could send one of these planes down but but um, at the moment with the turn to go it doesn't look like anyone's going to get that shot movement then at the end of um, turn 15 the final turn is done the planes as you can see have kind of scattered um, so the the sort of rationale for the game the game ending that's given in the that I've seen, I think, written in the rules or somewhere online, whatever, from the designer, is that, by and large, this is a sort of tactical dogfight happening within the context of a, you know, uh, wider battles and air operations going on, and that a, a minute of dogfighting would then attract other aircraft into the area, and so the sort of parameters of what's going on would change as pilots started to responding to other threats and trying to break off and what have you. Um, so yeah, the scenario as it is ends after 15 turns, which is a minute of flight. And yeah, things have kind of scattered there. You know, the, this would be a dangerous situation, but this guy's banked this way, so it hasn't got an arc of fire in there and so on. Anyway, um, we have one shot left to do because this, um, a Russian veteran pilot was able to announce tailing and this guy rolled a massive roll for initiative a 10 plus uh, this guy sorry rolled a massive roll for initiative and that gave him the the best initiative um, and he was then able to drop onto a different plane he has got a shot in there we'll just calculate it out um, the uh, um, the Russian I-15 at range 1 I think has about 12 firepower which is pretty poor but that's what they've had all game uh, yep 12 firepower at range 1 the defence um, deflection is times 1 because he's absolutely lined up on it um, so the defence of the gladiator is 5 so that gives him a 2 to 1 shot which if we come over here onto the combat table um, is pretty decent you know he can score seven hits with a two to one shot if your rolls less than zero one on percentile dice um, which isn't likely <laughs> um, if we look at the modifiers I know he used hard to uh, break turn rate so that's plus 20 but he has got this 12 o'clock lining up with six o'clock for a minus 20 so he's on a flat shot and he's also a veteran so he's got minus five on the dice roll so um, this to win it then 
against Gladiator 3. Let's check if Gladiator 3 has taken any damage. Gladiator 3 has taken two points of damage. Um, so White's 10s, uh, minus 5 on the dice roll, uh, 38. So that's a 33 on the 2 to 1 uh, table. Let's have a look. 33, 2 to 1 table. Uh, three points of damage. Three points of damage. On to Gladiator 3. Takes him up to 5. Okay, so let's just do a, show you another couple of things which I don't think apply, um, but we'll discuss them anyway. So here on the gunfire table, you can see for the uh, Polycarpov uh, I-15, it has a column called criticals and it says four. So had we managed to inflict four points of damage, we could have rolled on the critical table as well, but we didn't, we inflicted three, so that doesn't matter. So the other thing to check is just to go over and just see how many, um, uh, shots the uh, how many hits the gladiators have and you can see uh, damage factor five eight so that five points of damage there means that this is uh, severely damaged um, and would take a number of penalties uh, it would be taking points of deceleration it couldn't use um, uh, it couldn't use emergency turns blah 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 it speeds uh, minimum and maximum speeds would be dropped. Um, its maximum speed, sorry, would be dropped by 0.5, and I think its minimum speeds would increase by 0.5, and so on. So it would become less manoeuvrable um, and have drag, and yeah. Uh, so that is it um, for the end of the game. A severely damaged gladiator, everything else still flying perfectly well. If I go through here, you can see. Uh, the uh, Russian planes took uh, two hits on this one, two hits on this one, and three hits up there. As we know, this gladiator was severely damaged, took five hits. Um, an undamaged gladiator, and a gladiator with two hits on it. Um, and that is it, 15 turns of dogfighting. Um, some slight damage on the planes and everything's now breaking off and heading home.